Welcome back to the channel. All right, today we are basically gonna go over the Maiar decks. The whole point of this video is to give you the basic concepts of dexes. What exactly is going on under the hood? What do you need to know about swapping liquidity and farms? Just to get started, this is a beginner's video. So this is gonna give you the information you need in order to understand what's happening on the decks right now and to start researching the right topics and learn new strategies and all kinds of stuff. I'll share a few basic ones with you today and hopefully this will give you a good understanding of everything. If you're in here for the MyR decks, you're gonna get some great information. If you're in here for just the basic concepts of DeFi, swapping, liquidity, and farming, you're gonna learn a lot too. So make sure you stick around, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. There's a lot of good information there too. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna to switch to this view here. Okay, so what we're basically looking at, let's actually go into the zoom view. That's a little bit better. Okay, so basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at the swapping tab. So the first thing to understand is what is swapping, right? You're swapping one asset for another. Now, in order to swap, there has to be an amount of those assets available for the swap to occur. Where is it coming from? Well, that's what the liquidity pools are providing. So let's take a look at what we can actually swap here. If we go to USDC, well, we can only swap the USDC for eGold. Okay, if we go to MEX, we can only swap the MEX for eGold. But if we go to eGold, we can swap the eGold for MEX or USDC. So why is that? That's the first thing to answer. Well, the reason for that is because the liquidity pools allow you to trade. Okay, so if we look under the active pools, there's an eGold MEX pool, meaning that eGold can be traded for MEX and MEX can be traded for eGold. There's also an eGold USD, USDC pool, which means that eGold can be traded for USDC or USDC can be traded for eGold. These pools are allowing those swaps to occur. Now, what you can't do is trade MEX for USDC or USDC for MEX because a pool doesn't exist for that. So if you go into swap and you try to choose USDC and you want to buy MEX, you can't do it. If you want to buy, if you want to take MEX and swap it for USDC, you can't do it. So what you would do is you would, it, let's say you wanted to turn your MEX into USDC. What you would do is take your MEX, you would swap it to eGold, and then you would take your eGold and swap that into USDC. That's how you would facilitate that. In order for you to do a direct swap, there would have to be a pool here under active pools that says MEX USDC. Okay, so I hope that makes sense just first to understand what the pools allow you to do. They enable the swapping. They provide the liquidity for the swapping. In traditional finance, what you're going to have is market makers that provide liquidity. And they're very old-fashioned, very dated, and very slow, very slow with settlement. So you tend to have a lot of roadblocks in the traditional financial world. Well, with these liquidity pools, the liquidity is available directly and it's tracked in a smart contract. So basically anything you're doing is using the liquidity pool to provide those funds. You don't need a centralized third party to provide liquidity. This is allowing the community to do it and reap the benefits of it. So it's a very, very interesting thing that has occurred in the DeFi space that's very important to understand. Okay, so that's liquidity. Now, if I wanna add liquidity, I wanna come in here and I have 1.39 e-gold. How am I gonna add this here? Well, in order for me to add this into liquidity, I have to have an equivalent amount of USDC. So let's, if I wanted to go into the eGold USDC pool. So let's just say, for example, eGold right now is trading at $100 a coin. Well, that would mean that I would need at least 139 USDC in order to match this. You need to have an equivalent amount in value of each. So if I wanna take this maximum amount, I would need 500 USDC because of the current price, right? But if the price was only $100 a coin, well, then I would technically only need $138, right? Because that would be my maximum. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You need to have an equivalent amount of both tokens in value. So for example, if I wanted to add to the eGold MEX pool, well, I would need at least at the current price of eGold, 387,000 MEX. Now, if I don't have that, what I would need to do is buy eGold or use some of my eGold and swap it to max so that I have the right amount. So let, one thing you could do is you could basically swap about half of this balance into max, and then you should have an equivalent amount roughly of each. You can do the math and figure out exactly what it is. So that's one thing to know about adding liquidity. Once you add that liquidity, it's then going to be in the liquidity pool and you can then farm it. You can add it to farming. So we'll get to farming in a minute. The other thing I wanna go over is slippage. So you're gonna see slippage when you're doing swaps and when you're adding liquidity. Now, what is slippage? 
Slippage basically means that you are giving it, in this case, a 1% standard deviation up or down for the price to move. So let's say that you're doing e-gold max, right? If I'm swapping e-gold for max, and the price of max is just shooting up at the time I'm trying to do the swap. Well, the 1% may not be enough if the price is shooting up too fast. So you may just have to wait or keep retrying your transactions until the price stabilizes slightly. Now, if the price is stable enough for your swap to go through, basically what it means is if the price goes up or down by 1%, you're okay with the loss or the gain, and you're gonna allow your swap to complete. Now, if the price is very stable for both the assets, then you can probably get away with a 0.5 or 1% slippage, or 0.5 or 0.1% slippage, but for right now, it seems like over the last 24 hours, 1% has been the best option. And even then, at times, the transactions haven't gone through because the price of MEX was just going through the roof. So that's one thing to note about slippage. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna look at is farming. So when we look at farming, what I want you to understand first about farming is the concept of impermanent loss. A lot of people are going to run into this an impermanent loss is basically when you're losing value based on the fluctuation of one of the assets you've put in the pool. Well, let me explain that. So if you look here, you'll see this eGold Max LP staked pool, right? Or this LP staked, these tokens that I have here. If I hover over this, you'll see that I have 77,900 Max and I have 0.27 eGold matched. Now what's happened is over the course of the last few days, the amount of locked Max I've had has gone down but the amount of e-gold I've had here has gone up. Now, the reason that that's happened is because the price of locked max has gone up so much that it takes less locked max to equal out the value that I put in here. So in reality, for a lot of people, it may have been better just to hold their locked max, wait for us to cross a billion dollar uh, total value locked, and then put in their liquidity. But then again, if we had done that, it may not have gone up to a billion as fast because the liquidity was needed in order for everything to grow. So it's kind of a catch-22. The good thing here is the majority of people that are gonna run into an impermanent loss situation are people that received free max from staking their e-gold over the last year. So I would say this, if you've run into that, it's not something to be disappointed about, but it's something to understand that it's part of the growth of the asset. And it's a good thing that it's grown this quickly and so much interest is there for the future, that's just a great thing. Now, the other thing to know about this is you could technically earn back that imp impermanent loss over time. How would you do that? Well, one way is just by the amount of mechs you're earning. You might earn enough mechs to cover that entire thing over the next year. On top of that, as more people are coming into the eGold mechs pool or eGold USDC pool or even the mechs pool, what you're gonna start seeing here, not in the uh, max pool, but in the eGold max pool or eGold USDC pool, what you're going to start seeing is that your liquidity pool tokens, in this case, I have 2.62 worth 4,600. These are going to go up in value if more liquidity is being added to the pool. Because in order to do that, what's happening is people have to buy the liquidity pool tokens and the liquidity pool tokens are going up in price. So you're maintaining your liquidity pool tokens when you put them in. But if the value of those tokens is rising, well then the value of your liquidity pool tokens is rising. And that means that the value of your underlying assets is rising and the fluctuation in price is still technically leading to a profit because you don't know how the price of MEX is gonna do. You didn't know how it was gonna do when it was released. No one could predict that it was gonna grow so quick. So putting in your locked MEX here, if you had been a staker, not a bad thing. If anything, you should be proud that you're helping the growth of the exchange. And in the long term, you will likely profit from it, assuming we grow as much as you know some of us are expecting. So that's another thing to note. Your liquidity pool tokens can rise in value or drop in value but they can rise in value as you start seeing more of those liquidity pool tokens being purchased and more being added into the farm and into the liquidity pool. The next thing is your earned max. So what are some strategies that you can do to use some of this earned max? Well, you'll see here that I've earned about 333,000 max in this account. So what I could do here if I wanted to is I could harvest all of this 333,000 and I could take it out. Now, if I take it out, what's that going to do? Well, it's not going to change the pool in any way. These numbers, my earned max will just go down to zero, and that locked max that I've earned will go into my wallet. What will happen here is that I'll continue to earn locked max because I'm not touching my liquidity pool tokens. Those will stay staked. 
So my locked max earned will keep going up and I'm just gonna harvest the rewards I've gotten so far. Now, if I was to do that, I would then be able to go into liquidity, go to add liquidity, choose locked max here and match that locked max that I've earned with the equivalent amount of e-gold in value and then add that back into the pool and add it back into the farm. So I'd basically be able to take my earned max, match it with e-gold, put it back into the farm to compound my rewards. That's one way. I saw on Twitter, someone mentioned another great way. So I'm gonna share that with you. If we go onto Twitter, you'll see here that I had a conversation. I was talking to Elrond Maximus and I told him, you can invest, you can harvest your lock max rewards and stake them back into the e-gold max farm if you have additional e-gold for staking. That's what I just showed you. If not, you can just stake the rewards into the max farm. So what I meant by that is, let's say you take out, let's say I take out this 333,000 max if I harvest it, the locked max. So if I harvest that and then I go into add liquidity, I need to have an equivalent amount of e-gold in value. But let's say I don't have any more e-gold. I don't have any money to buy e-gold. Well, then what I can do is just go into farms and just take those locked max earnings and put them into the max farm and I'll earn rewards on them here granted at a lower rate, right? Now, this guy, Crystal Meth, put in another great suggestion, so another possible strategy. He said, there's no need for additional e-gold. If you get $100 of locked max as a reward, withdraw $101 of liquidity pool tokens from the farm. The spare $1 is for the 1% penalty, penalty fee. Who cares with this crazy APY? Remove liquidity with it, swap the max you get for e-gold, and then pair all of that with the locked max and put it back. So basically what he's saying is you don't even need to match new e-gold with this locked max. You can just withdraw. And so you can harvest all this locked max, right? And then you can withdraw your e-gold max. You don't want to withdraw your e-gold locked max, right? Because you can't sell your locked max. You can't swap it for e-gold. So what he's saying is harvest all your rewards. And then after that, you can hit withdraw and you can take out your liquidity pool tokens, just enough for you to sell some of your mechs for eagle. So basically what you would do here, okay, let me explain this properly. So what you would do is you would harvest the rewards. Now you have the locked mechs sitting in your wallet. The next thing you would do is withdraw the amount that you need in order to match the locked mechs with the right amount of eagle. So what you could do if you have that fully in mechs or if you have that fully in eagle or you need some combination of both after you withdraw this, you just convert as much mechs as you need back into e-gold so that you can then match your e-gold with all of your locked mechs and recompound it. So you're basically ending up with more e-gold, you're using your locked mechs to match it, and you're putting it back in the stake, compounding your rewards, continuing to earn. This method is not bad at all because if you do this, you're not taking a loss by doing it. And on top of that, you're earning the higher rewards because you're back in the e-gold max pool. This is one way to do it, to use your rewards if you don't have additional e-gold on the sidelines that you wanna put in, right? If you do have additional e-gold on the sidelines that you wanna put in, well then you're probably better off harvesting and matching the locked max with that additional e-gold and adding it back to the stake. But if you don't, then you're better off withdrawing the amount that you need, swapping some of your max for e-gold, matching it with your locked max, putting it back in. So there's a number of different ways for you to do this. And as there's more tokens, as there's more pools, there's gonna be a lot more strategies. It's gonna get a lot more interesting and you're gonna continue seeing value go up. I mean, if we look at it just right now, we're looking at the total value locked has already crossed 1.12 billion. 1.12 billion total value locked. The market cap for MEX is now 1.96 billion. It is almost at $2 billion. So things are growing rapidly here. And I think that we're going to see a lot of price appreciation, not only in MEX, but in the liquidity pool tokens and also in e-gold. I think we're gonna see all of those things rise. So you're just gonna have to figure out what is working the best for you, right? This, I hope, has given you enough to get started. What I would do if I was you, if this was not enough, is Google DeFi swapping. What is DeFi liquidity? What is DeFi farming? There's a lot of great articles. There's also some great YouTube videos. Even Wesley Kress has put out some great information on doing these things in the MyR Exchange. Check out his Twitter. Check out a lot of other people's Twitter. You know, this guy, Crypto Meth, just gave us some great information. And, you know, he's just a guy on Twitter. So follow some people. You know, make sure you're involved in the community and you'll learn a lot. 
and I'll try to give you whatever I can, but do your homework, do your research, and I wish you all the best. I hope everyone gets to take advantage of the opportunity here, and I hope that everything performs and grows as we're expecting. You know, everything is a risk in life, but sometimes the risk is worth the reward. In this case, for me, I believe it's worth the reward. You have to make that decision for yourself, and I really, really hope that it works out for you. Thank you for joining me. Feel free to ask questions. If you have other feedback, if there's anything I missed, if I got anything incorrect, put it in the comments. If you have strategies that I didn't cover, put them in the comments. Help everyone out. Tweet me stuff you want. I'll retweet it. Let's share the information, and let's make this a week, month, year, five years to remember. Thank you all. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll have more videos coming on the Meyer Exchange in the future. Once the MEX charts are available on TradingView and elsewhere, we'll start doing some TA on it. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot to do. I uh, hope to see you guys again very, very soon. New TA video on Bitcoin and eGold likely coming today or tomorrow. Probably tomorrow because I'm kind of tired today. So tomorrow, I'll see you again. Have a wonderful weekend. Peace out.